Do you want to create some high-end, cottage-style DIY projects for your home this season on a budget? Today, let's recreate some high-end dupes from well-recognized brands such as McGee & Co, Anthropology, and Pottery Barn for a fraction of the cost. friend, if this is your first visit to our little cottage, I'm Rachel from the blog StoneCottageHome.com. In your visit today, we will recreate our versions of some high-end cottage-style Christmas decor. And if you're looking for some old world inspired Christmas cottage-style decor, then stick around to the end of our visit where I will share with you a lovely Scandinavian inspired Christmas decor makeover. First up are these lovely amber glass ornaments by McGee & Co. I found a tutorial online by Craftberry Bush. She uses special glass paint, plastic ornaments, a hair dryer to speed the process, and a detail brush to get the dots to give a tortoiseshell look. I will leave her tutorial linked for you below. Amongst my cottage-inspired inspiration pictures, these vintage-looking sleigh bells caught my eye. The one by Anthropology is the one I'd like to recreate. Here are the bells that I thrifted at the end of the season last year. I believe they were about three or four dollars. These bells are silver and slightly rusted. I'd like to have a two-toned antique effect. Let's try some rub and buff and Rust-Oleum Metallic Spray in Dark Copper. Originally, I planned to use these two faux swags thrifted last year for $2 each, but on closer examination, they looked rather scraggly and worn. After a quick trip to Home Depot for these metal rings to hang it with, and two spruce and pine mixed picks from Walmart, we have all the things we need to complete this project. This sumptuous red and gold jacquard ribbon was from Hobby Lobby, where everything is 60% off. I will link all of the supplies for this project below. As the base for our sleigh bell swag, we will take these two picks and meld them into one. In evaluating how much to spend on a DIY project, it's always good to look at the quality of the materials you're using. Sometimes thrifted items are perfectly suitable. Other times they look like thrifted items in this case, the new picks were a good choice. Now friends, I am no master bow tire. This was my third attempt. I did watch a video giving a tutorial on how to do this on YouTube. I'll link it for you below. Pretty much, you make a loop and then twist the tail so that the next loop will not be backwards. It's so fun to learn new things. In keeping with our gold-toned metal, let's give these hanging rings a little rub and buff. Now a little hot glue to attach our bow and tails. To get the classic ribbon tails, simply fold your ribbon in half and cut at an angle. <laughs> well, the other direction. But the piece I just cut will be perfect for the tail on the other side. There we go. For a bit of English country flair, I pulled these pheasant feathers out of my stash and decided to tuck a few of them in. Using natural elements like pine cones and pheasant feathers, along with the rich jacquard and the shine of the sleigh bells, 
gives a richness and a layered look that is so quintessentially cottage and charming. All done! Now it's time to hang our sleigh bell swag! Of all the projects that we worked on for this visit, this one and one of the others were my favorites. Let me know in the comments below if you think our swag turned out as well as our inspiration picture. These German lit villages by Pottery Barn caught my eye. They were from last year, so I couldn't find an original price. If any of you happen to know, please leave it in the comments below. There is something magical about the mostly white houses with touches of gold and silver on the roof. I would like to recreate something like this with perhaps a little more detail and charm. This village house was thrifted for $10, sprayed with heirloom white spray paint, and has joined my other homes for a very alpine-inspired snowy village. The woven tapestry backdrop behind our alpine village was thrifted last year for 3 or $4 and sets the tone for this village as if they were made to go together. I've collected these houses over the last three years and generally pay between five and ten dollars for each one. Now, this alpine snowy village is quite a bit different from the lit German paper village, but they both have their own distinct charm. Now for the second of my two favorite DIY high-end dupe projects. This is the Balsam Hill Sugared Wreath Challenge. I'm excited about this one. I've gathered all the materials. We have $4 for our base wreath, $2 for our sugared fruit, and miscellaneous other sugared fruit and picks that we will use as needed. The first step is to remove all the fruit from the grapevine wreath and see <laughs> which ones can still be used. Next we remove the rope and then fluff and light our base wreath. Such a difference already. I always feel like a little elbow grease and in this case fluffing and adding lights increases the value of the materials that you have on hand. As I was working, I kept the inspiration picture pulled up on my phone as a reference so I would know how much sugared fruit and where to apply it. From the inspiration picture, I also noted that they had dark red berries sparsely dispersed throughout the wreath. I chose these picks that I had on hand from last year and simply thinned them out with my clippers. As you can see, there's quite a bit of the sugared fruit and the green apples left over. 
I will save these for a project for next year. When making a dupe, it's okay to add your own personal touches at times. And you can see I have on hand a bowl of pine cones. These are the same ones I used for the frosted pine cones from last week. Matt and I gathered these when we were on vacation in the mountains. I thought they would make a good extra touch. Just the same as we added the pheasant feathers to the sleigh bell swag, the pine cones add a little bit extra and the personal touch that make your decorations your own. Friend, if you are new to the Stone Cottage home, welcome. I am delighted to have you along. On this channel, you will find all kinds of inspiration for interior design focused on the cottage style. Everything from defining your version of the cottage style, to choosing paint colors, to combining furniture, and all of it on a budget or with DIY projects combined. If this sounds like something that would interest you, then I invite you to tap that subscribe button and join the Stone Cottage Home family. Okay, our Balsam Hill Sugared Fruit Wreath Challenge has been completed. Let me know what you think. Have we succeeded? As promised, I have saved our Scandinavian inspired old world cottage style makeover for the very end. This little rocking horse we thrifted probably three or four years ago for about $5. And I've decided to bring it from its heavily lacquered 1980s look to a raw wood that is a lot more in keeping with something you might see from Scandinavia. Matt begins by covering the little horse with citrus strip, which has unpleasant scent, especially when if you have to do it indoors. Then he wraps it in cellophane and lets it sit. Finally, we unwrap the horse and begin scraping. The citrus strip was a great starting place, but there was still much sanding to do as the lacquer was very heavily applied. I'm so grateful for Matt's help with this project. Here is the little handmade rocking horse looking fresh, new, and ready to be decorated in celebration of the Christmas season. Similar to the inspiration pictures, I wanted to use blue velvet ribbon, dainty snowflakes, and some type of greenery for a wreath to go around his neck. Both the ribbon and the delicate snowflake garland are from Hobby Lobby, and I will link them for you. The greenery I already had on hand. Let's get started! What kind of Christmas DIY projects are you working on this season? The projects that always catch my fancy are the ones that are unusual, interesting, and unique. They don't look like the projects that everyone else is doing. This always helps if you are wanting to curate a home that is individual to your tastes. Have you seen my trick for a perfectly balanced bow Make your first loop, make your center loop backwards, make your third loop, pull it through, then slide your thumb inside of each loop, pinch the tails with your fingers, and pull evenly. You should get a charming, cheery little bow. Now let's add a snowflake garland rain. Do you ever find that when you pick out DIY projects to try, sometimes they're way over your head and you learn a lot of new things and other times they're much simpler than you thought? Here is my original inspiration picture. I love the blue. This one has snowflake details. This one appears to have a whitewash over raw wood. And this one is most similar to what I have. 
You might say our little horse is a combination of all of the above, but I really like how he turned out. Friend, I hope you found today's visit to be helpful. If you are looking for inspiration this Christmas season for cottage style decorating, be sure to subscribe as our next visit will be a decorate with me using the DIY projects that you and I have created together. Thank you for taking the time to stop by our little cottage. I'm already looking forward to our next visit. Until then, Merry Christmas!